right now. We need to take a listen. Well, uh, we are back at the intersection of Baxter and Mercer Roads. We just wrapped up an interview with KPD spokesperson Daryl DeBusk, who did tell us that there were three males and three females that were apprehended from a home off of West Baxter Avenue. Now, they say they are confident that they know that this one, at least one of those individuals, was responsible for the robbery in downtown Knoxville earlier this morning. Now, he did tell us that they did evacuate homes as precautionary reasons around this area due to the fact that they did not know if any of those suspects were armed. Now, Daryl did tell us that when they arrived on scene, there was a male and a female in the backyard of the residence, and they were unsure of whether they had anything to do with it, but they took them into custody for questioning. Later on, two more males and two more females around 1145 came out of that residence, and now they are all taken into custody. They've been taken back for questioning. So Daryl said there will be a lot more information that will be coming out within the next couple of hours on what happened here. We do know that um, we had two elementary schools, which was Belmont and Maynard Elementary School, that were on lockdown because of this. And as I said earlier, we had several homes in the area that had to be evacuated for precautionary reasons in case there was a weapon involved. We do know that they came out of the house and there was no weapon that um, Daryl DeBus did speak of. Now, everybody has been cleared to go back into their homes. They said there is no reason for anyone in this area to feel unsafe. We will bring you more information as we continue to learn it. Back to you in the studio. WBIR 10 News reporter Kelsey Pape is live on the UT campus with the story of two students who will remember that spot forever. Kelsey. That's right, Robin and John. The Rock serves as a communication hub for students, and it changes by occasion. You'll see hellos and goodbyes. You'll see uh, sports smack talk. You'll see birthday wishes. You'll see political advertisements. And as you're about to see, you'll even see marriage proposals. UT has its fair share of traditions. The color orange, the hill, Smokey the blue tick hound, and the torchbearer. But nothing is quite as big, literally, as this 98 ton rock. It's just a way for people to represent themselves and get any kind of message out there. Everybody sees it. You, I mean, sometimes people will make a point to walk by if they know something special is on it. The rock has been on campus since the 1960s and has served as a student canvas. For Clinton Hill and Sarah Kinsler, it's much more than that. So we've been together for almost five years, and we've known each other since we were kids. So, just kind of how it happened. I didn't really prefer it one way or another, but it just kind of happened big, and everyone saw it. Hill had several of their friends paint the rock while he took Sarah to lunch. She wasn't expecting it at all. I kind of felt like something strange was happening, but I didn't really know what was going on. And then when I saw it, I just started bawling my eyes out, and he made me turn around, and he was on one knee. And UT made a Facebook post asking to hear about more Rocky Top proposals. Kevin Love says he met his wife during a rain delay during the 2011 UT Montana game, and they were married a couple of years later. Christina Colley was proposed to outside of Thompson Bowling Arena after UT laid a smackdown on the Florida Gators in 2012. Hill and Kinsler says there is something special about UT, and it was the perfect place to begin their lives together. I think this was just really special because. He shared his love with a whole with the public. You know, I mean, it's not the whole world, but <laughs> with UT and Knoxville. Well, there isn't a specific time limit on how long a message will stay up on the rock. As you can see, that was five days ago that that proposal happened, and there's already a brand new message back there. Now, Clinton and Sarah did tell me they're happy that it stayed up that long, and they're looking forward to planning that 2016 wedding. Back to you in the studio. I would love to know how many messages over the decades have, yeah. are on that rock right there. Kelsey, thanks so much. Turn to WBIR 10 News reporter Kelsey Pape, who joins us live from campus with what we can expect in just a matter of months. Kelsey. Well, John and Robin, we've been talking about UT's billion dollar facelift for about a year now. Several projects have already been completed, including a pedestrian bridge, which is right down the row, as well as a new residence hall that just opened several months ago. But there is still a lot of work that needs to be done, and a lot of it is going to revolve around landscaping. I caught up with UT officials today who say that the campus in 2017 is going to look completely different than how it looks today. If you drive through UT's campus, you'll see students, tradition, and a lot of construction. Crazy seeing things shoot up all over campus. Uh, 
Number one being the Fred Brown, the new residence hall over there. I mean, it is a mess, but I think it's bettering the campus. You know, everything's starting to look nicer. And it's just the beginning. There are multiple projects underway, including the construction of Strong Hall, which will become a nine-story classroom and laboratory facility, and also the new student union, which is a $170 million project. We're taking the best of the past in terms of the buildings on the hill and what it means to be at the University of Tennessee, and we're engaging that and positioning ourselves for the future. On top of the billion dollar facility upgrades comes $20 million in landscaping, all meant to improve the look of the campus while maintaining its history and tradition. We have some wonderful places like the Hill and the Mall, but what we're able to do because we're doing over a billion dollars in construction, we're able to link those projects together. Second Creek, Circle Park, and Torchbearer Plaza will all be seeing landscaping changes before the Vols are back on the football field in August. We want to really enhance that area. It's looking a little tired. So we're going to be re completely redoing all of the landscaping there, all of the plaza. We're going to expand it so that on game days and on the ball walk, there's more places for our fans and for our students. Students say they've seen a lot of change in their short time at UT, but they are extremely excited for what is yet to come. But I can already tell that it's going to look pretty amazing once it's all finished. Well, several of the landscaping projects are already underway, but a majority of them will be starting in about around May. Now, that includes Circle Plaza and Torchbearer, um, excuse me, Circle Park and Torchbearer Plaza, where we are right now. Now, Dave Irvin did tell me that all of this will be complete in August before the students return back to school. Live in downtown Knoxville, Kelsey Pape, WBIR 10 News. WBIR 10 News reporter Kelsey Pape learned more about the legalities of these roadside memorials and why they could be disappearing. Well, a Knoxville family is going through this exactly as we speak. Now, Diane Fox placed a memorial in memory of her son on the side of Rifle Range Road nearly five years ago. She and her husband have maintained the property ever since, and until recently, it remained untouched. Timothy Fox was killed in a car accident on Rifle Range Road in 2010, and a memorial has stood at this site ever since. His grave, you know, he, that's where his body is and his headstone and everything, but um, to me, this is where he took his last breath, and this is where I would, you know, I try to just keep it up the best I can. Timothy Fox's parents, Diane and Tim, decorated the site with crosses, flowers, and even an angel. But someone recently vandalized it, and the foxes are taking it personally. We came by, and all his crosses, flowers were thrown up against the fence back here. And um, so we just put it all back where it went. And not too long after that, same thing happened again. We reached out to the Knoxville Police Department. They are unaware of any laws that protect these types of displays. In fact, when it comes to state roads, TDOT will actually remove them. That is state right of way, it is state property, so what you know is happening is that is trespassing. TDOT says it does this for several reasons, the main being public safety. Yeah, depending on what has been set up in that area, uh, if a driver was to go off the road and, and, and hit that, that air, hit, hit something in that area, uh, it could damage their car or uh, produce injury. Rifle Range Road is not considered a state road and is located in the city of Knoxville. Code enforcement manager Robert Moyers says the city will only remove roadside materials if a complaint was filed and it is obstructing the right of way. The Foxes understand there is no law protecting the site from vandalism and says it just comes down to morals. Oh, don't mess with people's memorials. That is all they have left of their loved ones, uh, you know, and that's, that's memories and, and things that they want to take care of. Well, there is no federal law governing roadside memorials. Therefore, it's up to the state to define its own rules, and every state is different. Now, Tennessee offers a program called Tennessee Groves as an alternative way to memorialize their loved ones. Now, memorials can be actually placed at rest stops instead on the side of the road. Mm.